Welcome to Deadball TV, everybody. We're going to be talking about the CONMEBOL International Friendlies from the March window. Before we do, smash the like button on this video and hit subscribe if you like videos covering the region. And also, if you want to see more stuff about the Copa America here on Deadball TV, we probably will have our first video on the tournament dropping sometime next week. So do not miss that and check out the social media links in the description. And a little intro topic. I asked Connor this uh, a few seconds ago, but I want to hear what the audience thinks. Let me know what fade I should get from an Argentine barber later today. Should I get the, uh, I was thinking the DePaul braids, but Connor didn't like that idea. So. Because you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. But you raise a valid point. Jack mentioned that my beloved Buenos Aires love extra. There's it's very yes. flamboyant over there. Every like what one in five, one in four people got blonde hair, dyed blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Doing too much is actually doing average in Argentina. Oh, I don't think. First of all, I don't think you got enough hair to do braids. God, you really want these braids. Second of all, does it have to be a fade? No, but the fades. I feel like they know what they're doing with fades here. Like everybody has a fade. Yeah, it'd be like. All right, hear me out. You don't go to the steakhouse to get the fish. Yes. All right. Yeah. We're got it. Done. I could get the cootie, but it's a little too safe. A little too corporate. Maybe you should dye blonde. Should I go blonde? Should I go blonde? I don't know fully, but here. maybe like halfway. See what you could do or or you could do uh I definitely think you need an eyebrow hash. Got to have the eyebrow oh, hash. Oh, yes. I think it's time. It's time. It's time. Honestly, I think it's time for me. A mullet and <laughs> beard slash mustache. Yes, dude. Yes, um, dude. We are going to be looking like the biggest douchebags on YouTube for this Copa America, bro. People are going to tune in and be like, is this a is this a live feed from a Miami club? Like, what am I looking at here? We were wearing like not, three gold Not a chains. day will go by where I do not wear <laughs> blue and white and some form of gold. Okay. Oh, we dude. We don't I, want I, I'm rocking the camisa completely unbuttoned. I'm going to have dangly earrings, bro. We're going to have hashes on both eyebrows. It's going to be I got the button up a sight ready. to behold. Where, where, where is it? This bad boy? Oh, yeah. That's that's the one. That's the this one This right bad there. boy, it's not getting buttoned past here. Midway. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's going to be peak. So you guys make sure to hit subscribe and let me know what what uh, what cut I should get. Maybe I'll wait a couple of days to see what the audience thinks. The first thing we're going to start with, we decided we're going to get a little graphic to begin this video. We're going to talk about the Ecuador national team. And this is a team that I'll read the results. They did beat Guatemala 2-0. Congratulations. Big win for Ecuador at the moment. Before losing to the Italians 2-0 in a defeat that I don't really think any Ecuadorians can complain about. Connor, I'm, I'm coming to you before I get my thoughts on a national team that you and I both share a soft spot for. What are we thinking? What's the takeaway here from Ecuador? Um, I think it's, I think it's kind of what I anticipated. Uh, first of all, my, my initial thoughts are I want to compare Ecuador to Colombia. Right, because they went up against big European teams, right? I think that Italy's closest comparison should and can be, or can and should be Spain, right? Different play styles, obviously, different personnel, obviously, but I think that that's both tenured European talent, right? Which is mm -hmm. what we've been saying, what South American teams need to be going up against, right? That's just what we need to be focusing on. Now, how, how Colombia got away with a 1-0 to and Ecuador couldn't even score a goal on Italy, I think that speaks to the quality of the Italian team. I was unable to watch the Ecuador-Italy mm. game, so this may be kind of a tennis match. I may be smacking it straight back to you. On paper... The stats really don't look bad. 49% possession for Italy, 51% possession for Ecuador. The one big takeaway here, sim similar pass accuracy, right? The one big takeaway here is that Ecuador had 10 total shots. And how many were on target? One shot Two? was on target. Yeah. 
saying that Ecuador had one shot on target. It's bad. And zero big chances. Now, to be fair, Italy wasn't exactly, they didn't exactly put up a master class. Italy did have four big chances, though, is what I'm seeing here. So out of their nine total shots, four big chances, three of those big chances missed. Similar fouls, 15 for Italy, 18 for uh, Ecuador. That, to me, same same amount of corners. Italy had one more, eight to seven. To me, that speaks of a competitive game. But if you had a chance to look at these, I want to know your opinions because what I'm seeing here is kind of the hallmark of Ecuadorian football. Opportunities, there's fight in them, right? There's fouls being committed on both sides. That speaks to a very physical game, right? It's only two goals Mm -hmm. against the European team in Europe. Like, all things considered for an unproven Ecuador, it's not awful. That's not terrible. That's not worst-case scenario. It's kind of expected, Mm. right? But all the other stats tell me that at least there was a fight put up. So I really don't know. I, I would have to see the quality of this football before I could call it um, or determine what the takeaways here could be for Ecuador. I'm going to disagree slightly and for several reasons. Number one, I feel like when we talk about this Ecuador team, the narrative is that they should be a challenger for this Copa America. And okay. the performances that I've seen in this window, I, like I don't even really want to talk about Guatemala because I don't think congratulations, we have to. Ecuador. Yeah. I don't think we have to. You scored two goals. Congratulations, but we can probably keep it pushing outside of that. Then you go up against a good, a, a good European side, not a phenomenal European side. They are oh, not good. Spain right now. They are not England. They are not France. Teams that fellow Conmebol competitors went up against and did better than you did. So that is concerning. It is concerning that Venezuela got a goal against Italy and you didn't. And so my biggest takeaway is it is cemented now. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, that the Ecuadorian attack is dead food. Yeah. They cannot score goals, bro. They're like a Roman Testudo. It's all defense. It's going to be very tough to break them down. But going forward they don't have a lot there and hear me out i was i was thinking about this i just uh, jumped on a, a podcast with michael talks football shout out to him where we were like ranking all the teams in for the copa america on a tier list and i'm genuinely at the point where i think there's two scenarios for ecuador here at this copa america and any ecuadorians i mean this with the most love and you guys let me know if you disagree scenario number one we see a greece 2004 or a paraguay 2011 where every goal is from a set piece, every goal is a header, every goal is from the penalty spot or from a center back's head, and they just claw their way, 1-0, ugly, knockout victories straight to the final, and because their defense is so good, it just keeps them in games. Or we see China at the Asian Cup, where there was one total goal in three games, but they finished with two points and bounced out in the group stage. I mean, that is genuinely what we're staring at right now with Ecuador. The, the floor is fully group stage exit. Let me be clear. It is group stage exit right now. The ceiling is also genuinely the final. I don't think they'll get there, but I'm just saying like if, if, if potential is completely realized, it's the final. But this team can't freaking score, bro. And this is an Italian defense. This is not prime Kalini, uh, Chiellini Bonucci. Those days no. are over. These guys are regularly conceding two goals per game. North Macedonia is scoring two against them. I'm concerned. I'm really concerned. Yeah. 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 I, th- I think I think we're pretty much in agreement there. That's what I was yeah. saying. It's it's kind of a hallmark of them that they've got really good control of the ball. What can they do with it? Nothing doing. You know, it's very tough to crack anything with this Ecuadorian offense and um Mm -hmm. it's kind of a bummer to see now Italy has to be recognized you're you're correct they're not one of the prominent competitors uh of or one of the most prominent competitors in the top flight of Europe but Mm -hmm. they are still the reigning Euro champions they're still the reigning Euro champions and that needs to be recognized right when you look at a result like Colombia, it's time to be concerned. 
right? Because if you want to talk, if this is just like a friendly window and we don't have Copa on the horizon, maybe there's some other takeaways. You get some more time to work on some things, some more actionable items that you can uh, progress towards. But going into the Copa America and seeing your competitors and how they're putting on a show here, I don't know. I don't know. Wembley mm-hmm. belongs to South America right now. The world is flipped upside down on its head. What is it? The Bernabeu and Wembley? Mm-hmm. They belong to South America? And the Maracana belongs to Argentina? What's going on? What is Reverse happening? colonization. Reverse colonization. We coming back. Gran Colombia. The Revenge of the Gran Colombia is what this is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dude, Very I said, dude, after... Th- after that Colombia game, dude, Simon Bolivar, he's smiling down right now. Should we move into Colombia? Is there anything else to be said about Ecuador? Do we talk about the party gate? Really quick. Really quick. Two minutes. Um, okay. Yeah, two minutes. Because I think this is overblown. It, to be it, honest, I think, I think it's, it's I think it's overblown. I think the biggest thing is that Kendry Pius was there, right? Like, Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. 16 years old in a club like that in Europe. Not not a good look. Not a good look. Especially, what was it, the night before the game? Two days before the game? In New York, I believe. But yes. Oh, it was in New York? Was correct. It's yeah, in New yeah. York. I think, Do you know what I think club the game was? was in New York. Papazul? <laughs> Papazul wishes, bro. <laughs> Papazul wash hey. right now. And if y'all watching had been to Papazul, you would understand. You, you would, would have understand. no issue with this. We would have no <laughs> Look, the the thing is, uh, you you can come up with the same argument that you give like uh, players like James Harden in the NBA or uh, Lou Williams, right? Lemon Pepper Lou. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. don't stop to the club. Go go the night after. You've got the budget. I don't think you got to fly directly back to your club. If you want a twenty four hour layover somewhere, you've got the funds. You've got the gumption to take that. Do it there, or go to a club elsewhere. To find something. Something else. Two days before the game. Wow. Yep. And if you're going to do it, put the phones in a bag. Put the phones in a bag. You don't need to be doing that. Put the phones in a bag because one of you idiots is going to send it to your friends and one of your idiot friends is going to show their idiot friends to impress them. Look, my buddy Kendry over here, underage, yep. in the United States. Those are serious allegations here. Those are serious. Yeah. Yes. Just be careful. In Ecuador, what you're doing? I'm not sure if it would be that big of a deal, also given the difference in the legal drinking age and everything like that. Like in South America, yeah. y'all, things are just a little relaxed here. Like that's just how it is, okay? Well, when I look at the, 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 the club gate with Ecuador, if you really want to extrapolate it, you can take this deep if you want to, right? You could say, if I'm getting negative and I'm getting – you know, conspiracy theorist up here, I could be like, oh, this team thinks they're better than they actually are. This team yeah. thinks that they're entitled to something at this next Copa America because they're not taking their, their national team selection seriously, evident by them going out and clubbing. Now, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with that, but I'm, I'm bringing that up to say because the vibes, the vibras are low right now in the Ecuadorian camp. Stories like this are a bigger deal. I guarantee yeah. you they beat Italy the next day 2-1. No one gives a damn. No one no gives, one a, gives damn. a damn. People no. celebrate it's this. It's because you lost. Correct. Yeah, it's because you lost. Correct. They say, oh, look. we. Oh, my gosh. Look at our team. Look how close they are. Yeah, Kendry probably shouldn't have been there. But, like, I mean, God, everybody gets along. That's what the story would be. Correct. They'd be like, hey, guys, ne- next time don't don't bring Kendry. You know, bring Kendry and Quito. Don't don't bring him in in New York. In but New it's York. because of the result. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think it's a bit overblown. This will be one of those moments that if Ecuador, I guarantee you, calling it right now, if Ecuador do not make it out of the group or they lose that first knockout game, people will go back to this instance. Yeah. And they will say, Oh, yep, this is when it this is the moment it all collapsed. No, it wasn't. No, no it wasn't. wasn't. We've it's been gonna collapse because months. of tactics. Yeah, yeah. Did this <laughs> one it shot collapsed. of vodka did not sink Ecuador? No, it collapsed the minute that you didn't lock down Gareca. That's what. Amen. Amen. Now, what a transition! We talk- do we go to Chile or do we go to Colombia? Let's, let's do- go to Chile, let's, bro. Let's go let's, to Chile, let's, bro. Let's go to Chile, bro. Can let's I say? Uh huh. 
My biggest takeaway, bro. I'm Rip maybe it. being a little little hyperbolic here. She she lays back. I think that is a little hyperbolic, but she lays back, dude. Tell me more. Why? I think people are seriously underrating the impact that Gareca will eventually have. But even just in the short term, bro, I want people to understand that this Chilean side went toe to toe, band for band, band for band, with a French team in Europe. We had a back line French including pr pretty much the French team. Saliba and Konate, those are two Premier, top center backs in the Premier League. And that Chilean attack was cutting through them at times. Yeah. I saw, I thought this was very telling. So there's a, there's a YouTube channel here. I think it's called like Pasión para la, la Roja or something like Passion for the Reds. I don't know if it's a Chilean fan channel or it might be the FA. But the top comment on, on that video, the highlight video, the, the resumen, I think is how you say highlights. Do you know what it was? Hmm. It was somebody who said, I haven't seen my Chile team play like this in a long time. Vamos Gareca. And it had like Vamos. 1,300 upvotes. And Vamos I saw that Gareca. and I said, uh, I said, oh, we, oh, the Peru in trouble now. You, Peru oh, no, in biggest, trouble big, now, Biggest bro. loser from this takeaway, Vélez Sarsfield. Vélez Sarsfield, you weren't giving my man the backing. And that's why he looked washed. He's going to come up here and he's going to take a, a side who two months ago we were saying they were the most shambolic in South America, the biggest decline, the biggest losers. And you're going to come up here and you're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mbappe. You're going to frustrate Mbappe. Mbappe was having Argentina flashbacks the whole time. Had mm -hmm. to have been. I mean, look at let me, let me read you some of these stats. Both teams with 90% accurate passing. That's 606 insane, by the way. passes, 606 passes and 92% accuracy from France and 403 passes and 90% accuracy from Chile. We haven't seen those stats in a long time, but honestly, I want to go back and I want to see the last time that Chile had 400 passes just in a game period. <laughs> Cause that's not the way they play. They've totally re at that clip no. at that clip. No, no shot. No shot. Um, four corners from Chile. Forcing errors in the French final third. I think that has to be said there, right? Um, and then nine shots with three on target. You've got a 30% like shot on target rate. That's that's solid. You're going to get mm -hmm. nine shots off against France? That's unreal. Mm -hmm. That's unreal. It's four unreal. shots unreal. No, dude. Un unreal. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Shots off target three. Four shots on target. Same as France. They're back, bro. They're back. They're back. Two blocked shots. Dude. And they hit the woodwork once. Yes, I was about to say, the game was 2-1. Eduardo Vargas, he is wide open six yards out, headers it off the woodwork. It would have made it 2-2 two -two at that point. Wow. Do you, do you Dude, they were this cooking. Is... Do you think this is the French underestimating and the Chileans uh, or the Chileans just balling out or a little bit of both? I'm going to say the the South Americans will always have a little bit more respect and desire for international friendlies when playing for the national team. Yeah. But I also think there was a, there was a couple players who were given an opportunity here in this Chilean side. Not just the young guys, but you know some of the old guys too. I think everybody it's looking at Gareca and saying, this man don't F around. I no. need to go out there and I need to perform. Or Correct. he's dropping me from the Copa squad. Dude, and C, C, bro. He brings Barrett and Diaz. Maybe this is a different game. But he's going to put his foot down. He's going to say, we're going to go there. We're going to leave our guy in England. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make a mark. And, dude, he's getting young guys firing too. Dude, Come on the, now. this Osorio kid from Chile. Yeah, I, I was not. I was not familiar with him before this. Um, I didn't know who he was. I, I think he was quite successful with the Chilean U twenty three squad, is what I've heard. I've since kind of started looking into him. Watch his goal against France. I like, dude. I saw it. and I was like, oh no, it's nasty. Which 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 one was oh, it? Oh no, because I, I saw the highlights. I just don't know who it was. It's outside the box. 
he's cutting in from the left side of the field, shoots yeah. it, it goes under Magnan's diving yeah. hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Side yeah. net. It was incredible. I think he's tw- I think damn, how old is he? Hold up. He might be 21. He is 20. He's 20. Holy. That's shit. insane. That's insane. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, bro, watch and, and even Davila, like this is a guy who's he's been balling in Liga Mekis for a, a while, but hasn't really gotten too many chances with the national team. I think he's got less than 10 caps against Albania. By the way, underrated win. You went to Europe and you spanked an, a European side 3-0. We, yeah. we need to get some props there as well. Somebody. Albania somebody, got a good yeah. record too. No, Nobody's talking about that. Nobody's no. talking about and, that. And Davila, hands down, man of the match against Albania. I haven't yeah. seen Chilean combos like this. I mean, they, it was it was Street Fighter out there, bro. I'm serious. They looked like 20, 2010 Spain. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Yeah, and they've honestly, been, they've been broken. That that may be the biggest takeaway. Like, take the scores, put them to the side, take the goals aside because those are always the biggest deal, right? Mm-hmm. But you put that to the side. The Chilean interplay, we haven't seen that in a long time. That's why I'm bringing up these passes, right? 403 passes at a 90% clip? No shot. That's unreal. That's against unreal. France. From Against France and from Chile. No. You expect yeah. that. You Maybe you expect that from somebody like Uruguay with Bielsa now or Brazil or maybe even Colombia on their day. But, dude, from Chile? No. No shot. I didn't expect that. Hadn't. No, nothing like that. I was like, they're going to bunker down. This is going to be counterattacking football. It's going to be like watching Venezuela play against like a South American giant. No. Yeah. No. You're going band for band, like you said, bar for bar with France. Yeah. I don't care if Argentina's yeah, ranked number one by FIFA and Coca-Cola and, uh, you know, the entire nation of Argentina. France is the best team in the world. France is the best team in the world. On paper, on the field, in depth, all of it. We all know England can't get it together, so put that roster to the side. France is the best team in the world. And mm-hmm. Chile, what we were arguing, bottom three teams in South America, now out of nowhere, on their – what is this? Is this their first match day with Gareca? Or yeah. their second match day? No, first. <sighs> Come on. Come on. I mean, watch put out, bro. respect on it. Watch out. Put some respect watch on out. it. And frankly, put some respect I, on it, bro. You got you got any closing thoughts? Because I think this one, I just want to let it simmer. I want to let it simmer. Little taste right here. Look out. Look out, bro. Last thing I'm going to say, this is an Albanian squad that just beat Poland 2-0 in the Czech Republic 3-0, and they hadn't lost in nine games. Where's your Lewandowski Thanks. with his Ballon d'Or? Where is he? He's playing at Barcelona, but he ghosted for this match. Dude, I was I was checking the fault mob app. I was hitting refresh because I thought that Chile was beating Nicaragua three nothing. But yeah. no, they were beating Albania in Europe. I might add, unbelievably impressive window. The only reason Chile are not the biggest winners is because the actual biggest winner is Colombia, which I feel like is the next team we should talk about. A one nil win away in Spain. Ridiculous goal. Ridiculous goal, Luis Diaz. Take a bow. Dude, I mean, good. I watched it. Lord. I watched it. I watched it five times this morning. So I saw the results and I'd done some <laughs> homework. But I was like, I gotta watch the highlights. I was in yeah. the shower, watched it five times. Unreal. It deserves. The cross it went in. To be I, I was in the shower, right? So I was like, kind of like half watching, and then I like looked and I started hearing some commotion, and I was like, this couldn't possibly be the goal, right? And Luis Diaz whips it in, dude. He came in flying again. Looked like Street Fighter. Dude came in. Boom. Unreal. Unreal. Oh, the, the finish from Munoz is disgusting as well. Like freakish. And freakish. I didn't even know who that guy was, but I mean, he's been starting for, uh, oh, Lord, help me. Not Crystal Palace. Is it? I forgot what. Damn, I forgot what club he's playing for in the Prem right now. Is it Wolves? What's his name? Munoz is his last name. I think it's Daniel is his first name, I think. Daniel Munoz, yeah. Crystal Palace. Yeah. Crystal Palace? Okay. Um, 
dude, what I'm I, everybody for Colombia right now is on form. And I think I think I said, I think I said, y'all check me in the comments. I'm pretty sure in the prediction I said they will not lose. They yeah. will not lose. Yeah, I think so. And I know the Romania game ended up being close in the scoreline because Romania gets some late goals after Colombia stopped giving a, a, a damn. They, when I say they murdered Romania, I mean, the Romans haven't been put down like that since Tudorberg Forest, bro. Barris, give me back my legions, dog. That's what the Romanian manager was saying on the sideline, dude. <laughs> it was a massacre. I turned it off. At the 70th minute, I was like, oh, these boys, they cannot play. They genuinely could not play it's with the rap. Canadians. Yeah. It was a wrap. So I don't even know how Romania ended up scoring. But honestly, I don't care. And I've already been dropping some hot takes. I'm going to drop another one, dude. If I have to go two favorites for the Copa America, Colombia is one of my favorites. I would say it's Colombia and you. I'm, I'm nominating them officially. Jack's going to go with a hot take. I picked Japan for the Asian Cup. I went with the layup. They let me down. Not making that mistake again. Colombia, bro. Colombia, Colombia is ready to stand on business. Lorenzo has them moving. They care. Mm -hmm. They care. They're ready. They are. They're prepared. This is what it yeah. looks like. This is a team that, if I had to say preparation for Copa America, if I had to grade it overall, A plus. A plus right here. Banging a fixtures leading plus. up to it. And the attitude that the fellas go in with, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I, honestly, if they had a clip of them at the club with a ball boy, you know, like taking shots, I'd be like, yeah, outstanding. Good oh, team building. I would have retweeted it. Retweeted. Yeah. Yeah. On Deadball TV's official link in the description. Genuinely, but this is what it looks like. These are the results that you have to get, right? This is what matters. The stuff in, in the club and all of that, you know, right, wrong, what have you, that's outside of football. We're here to talk about mm -hmm. football. The results on the pitch speak for themselves. This is what you have to do. This is what you have to mm -hmm. do. They could have, I don't even know, they could have they, they could have not hit a single training session. And if they do this, I'm I, mad respect to them. Love that. It's, it's weird. It's like, remember, Carlos Tevez and Aguero? Both famous in showing up late to practices, not going to practices at all. And everybody hates that until you score a banger on Derby Day. And if you do that consistently, you're a god. Yeah. Right? But outside of that, everybody mm -hmm. wants the Cristiano Ronaldos staying after practice running seven miles. Right? Everybody wants that until Carlos Tevez scores bangers. And then everybody's like, okay, this is what we prefer. Right? But... Uh, obviously, this is I have, this is no bearing on this. I have no idea what Colombia was doing, but it looks like they've been training in and out, day 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 in day out. Anime montage is what it looks like. Yeah, it looks yeah. like Demon Slayer recovery arcs. Is what it looks like. Correct. Correct. I guarantee you that's been playing in the locker room. On well, a loop. It, it has. It has to be. It has to be. Yeah, that or like Rock Lee versus Gara, just on loop, nonstop. Yeah, on loop. Spanish subtitles. Beneath yeah. my skin edit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Breaking Benjamin AMV, dude. That is definitely... <laughs> I mean, nothing else can explain this level of performance. I mean, y'all... Nothing else. They just ended a, a winning streak, an unbeaten streak for two teams. One was eight games, one was 12. They said, thank you very much, and threw that shit in the trash. I mean, dude, come on. In their what? house. In their in house. In their house. An ocean and a continent away. Come on yeah. now. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. I do not know how to praise this enough. Literally, the English language is feel, failing me right now. It is failing me right now. I don't have the words. Can, can you give me your perspective on what I just said? And I want the, I want the audiences as well. I genuinely the have them video? as the second favorite. <laughs> Well, everybody's in agreement. I don't even need to ask the audience. Everybody's been watching those videos for a long time. All right. We're mm -hmm. all fans of that. We all throw it on when we need to go to the gym, either that or 300. <laughs> I want to know what you think about me having Colombia as the second favorite. I don't blame you. 
I don't blame you. I mean, okay. I think maybe you give a little bit of credit to Brazil, but Brazil's got like a bunch of stuff going on outside of the actual game. What scares me about Colombia is that they're quiet. They're quiet. Thank you. They're quiet. What was the last big Colombian news that we heard was Luis Diaz's dad got returned. That's Literally. It. That's the last thing that we heard, and now they're out here spanking Europe, right? Brazil can go to yeah. Wembley and and score a goal, right, and go away, but they've got a racism press conference. Everybody's focused on Vinicius, right? No, gen genuinely, yeah. and it's a conference that needs no, to no, be you're had, right. and you're it's right. very important. Right. But prepping for the Copa America, my job is a footballer, and I'm not saying that, you know, just shut up and dribble. I think that's ridiculous, but... If I'm getting ready for the Copa America, everything else becomes secondary. I'm not worried about the situation in Spain. I'm worried about repping my flag and my badge, and I'm ready to show the world what Brazil is capable of, right? There's a lot mm -hmm. of stuff going on in the Brazilian side, guys, and they are still a threat. Do not get me wrong. There is, they have what, the second highest chance to win the Copa America out of all the teams right now. Probably, if we're being honest, they could just decide to turn it on and they could be back. That's just Brazil, Correct. right? Correct. How likely is it that they do that? I don't know, but they're still one of the dominant forces. But there's a lot of stuff going Absolutely. on. What scares me about Colombia, I'll say it again, is the fact that they're quiet. They're quiet and they're working on themselves, right? It's like that, that this stuff, the motivational crap that you see on Instagram, it's like, oh, you're doing this? Well, there's somebody out there working for what you want right now. And they're doing it harder than you. Mm -hmm. Argentina's playing Central American teams. They have no business playing for a paycheck. And Correct. Brazil is out here um, working on um, socio-political issues in Spain. And I would say they're just hitting the reset, too, on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. They're busy. Colombia is quietly perfecting themselves. This is like, uh, dude, let's let's bring it right back around to anime, right? Frieza's waiting on Namek. Goku's okay. in the spaceship training at 100 times gravity with weighted clothes on right now. He said, oh, I got something for yo ass. He said, Kaioken 100, and I'm a bust out Super Saiyan. I've pushed myself mm -hmm. to the limits. No telling what happens when games on the line, one to one against... I don't even know who against Brazil, against Uruguay, against Argentina. What happens when that star power kicks in? What happens when you're tired in the 90th minute? And I remember that I beat that ass in Europe yep. while you were over around over and, and dicking around in Central America. Yeah, I'm going to stand on business. So matters like Colombia, A plus best Best preparation for Copa America, hands down. And you know what? Mm -hmm. You know what? Same thing with Chile. We didn't hear jack about them. The last news that we heard was nope. Brereton Diaz. And that, dude, that blew away. That blew away. Like, I don't even know. If you've been, if you watch Dune, it blew away like spice on Arrakis. It was there and then it's not. Gone. What else have we heard? What else have we heard from that camp? Was there a response by Brereton? I don't know. I didn't hear anything. Because they're working on themselves. They're preparing. And they stood on business too. They stood on business yeah. too. They had the French clutching their pearls. Literally. Literally. They're about to take some of that gold back to South America. They're taking it back. Come on now. The last thing I'll say about Colombia. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like they deserve to be mentioned here. Is Uruguay to me. Colombia is Uruguay without a PR team. They don't have the Colombia are weird, bro, because they don't have a star outside of Luis Diaz. Uruguay have stars, stars. Real Madrid, multiple Atletico, Liverpool. Liverpool um, where is um, Napoli? Look, they they have ballers everywhere. PSG. Like, they just have higher-profile players. And with yes. that comes more responsibility. And you know what? Bielsa also brings that. He brings. He might bring tactics. He might bring experience. But he brings a target as well. He brings pressure. 
people Ain't nobody elevate. know who Nestor Lorenzo is. Yeah. Nobody, no, nobody's going to sit down with their grandchildren, at least not as of as of today of recording, and say, "Yeah, you know, we went up against uh, Nestor Lorenzo's team in the Copa, and we outclassed him." That's not a story. But saying we faced Marcelo Bielsa in the quarterfinals and we won two one, that's a story for the grandchildren. So I feel like Uruguay have that target that Colombia don't have, and I'm seeing some people like, "Well, what about Colombia? They." You know, they didn't qualify for the last World Cup. Exactly, bro. These boys are hungry, starving. They got a chip. They're, they're foaming. They got a bag of chips, bro. They got Takis. They are ready to murder somebody. And the Copa America is why... the place to do that. The Copa America is the one footballing competition in the world where you air out all your dirty laundry. You can say whatever you want about England, France, mm-hmm. competitions mm-hmm. And, and derby days and what have you. Nobody in South America likes each other. You might have friends on the team, but go watch go watch Brazil-Argentina, last Copa America final. Go watch it. You tell me how yeah. friendly Messi was to Neymar on the pitch. Tell me. Tell me. Tell, tell, yeah. me, tell me who Luis Diaz is going to take it easy on. If you think Cuti Romero is not going to slide tackle Richarlison harder than he's ever tackled anyone before just because they're teammates, you tripping. Cuti could end his career. He could Luke Shaw him. There's not going to be a single second thought in that man's mind until 15 minutes after the game. Yeah, he'll visit him in the hospital later that and night. That's if they that's if they win. If they lose... Yeah, that's a- Richarlison getting transferred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. Let, let's talk about Uruguay because I've already brought them up. So they only played one game and they lost 2 1 to the Ivory Coast. So I know this is a Conmebol takeaways video, but my biggest takeaway was that winning AFCON wasn't a fluke for the yeah. Ivory Coast. That was my biggest takeaway. I don't really know what to say about Uruguay. Um, I couldn't watch the game because it. You would think being in Buenos Aires, I could find a, a, a Uruguay bar. No, impossible. Like they literally don't exist. I walked in to a, a pub and I was like, "Yeah, uh, do you guys have uh, Ivory Coast Uruguay?" And they're like, "No." They're like, "Uruguay's <laughs> playing today," and I was like, "Aren't y'all supposed to be like cousins? Like, don't you respect each other?" And he was like, "Absolutely not." It's like, but we do have uh, Independiente versus some random Argentine third division. Club and I was like, I'm not really in, in that. Bro, bro. Um, so I had to watch the highlights, but I don't really know what the, the takeaway is here from Uruguay. Um, from what it seems like, Ivory Coast actually gave him a really good game, and I don't really know what else to say about that. I, I think with Uruguay, the biggest thing that I'll be paying attention to is their depth because I think their starting 11 is really, really good. But I don't know how deep the bench is. I think they have a couple guys. But if one or two goes down, I mean, if anything happens to Darwin Nunez or Valverde, this team is finished. We're in trouble. Yeah. So um, that's, that's kind of all I have to say about Uruguay. I wish I had we more. Can take but... a look at some stats real quick. 14 total shots, 60% possession, and three shots on target from Uruguay. Six shots from Ivory Coast, two shots on target. Um, and let's see. One big the goal chance that they can see from, was a little sloppy. It was sloppy? Yeah, it's so own goal from Oliveira. He, he kind of slipped. So I kind of felt bad yeah. for him, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great. It's a bummer. But we're looking at 480 passes on 87% pass accuracy. Very, very reminiscent at least statistically, of some of the other top flight guys, right? Chile, namely, or some of the other high potential guys. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call Chile top flight yet. Yeah. It's yeah, looking like yeah. they're shaping up to be. 12 fouls for Ivory Coast, 15 for Uruguay, four and five corners, three such shots on target from Uruguay, two from Ivory Coast. Looks like both converted. It looks like Uruguay dominated possession. Ivory Coast just capitalized. Now, you eliminate yeah, that own goal, it's a 1-1. One, one. 
it's a very different conversation. But still, an Ivory Coast that we really didn't have expectations for at the beginning of uh, AFCON coming through and taking on objectively an on-fire Uruguay. That's very telling. That's very yeah. telling. Well, I think both teams were on fire. You you can't not be on fire after winning the yeah. AFCON. And That's true. And Uruguay were without Nunez, which is a big loss. I think this is just very complimentary, actually, to the Ivory Coast. And a little fun fact, you know, I like to drop these. This is Uruguay's first loss to an African opponent since Algeria in 2009. Wow. Wow. It's been a long time. You want another fun fact? This is Uruguay's second ever loss against an African team. Two losses in their history. Wow. Yeah. Ain't that crazy? That is kind of insane. Did not expect you to say that. I don't think they have a ton of games. They probably have like 20 total. But yeah, they yeah. lost twice. That's impressive. Well, fact check me. Time to get back to the horse. Yeah. Bit massive dub. Biggest winner from the Combable window is Africa. Uh, a team that definitely was a loser for very unfortunate circumstances is Paraguay who had their game with Russia canceled because I believe there was a, a shooting or something at a concert in Moscow, something terrible. Yeah. I don't want to talk about that. I mean, I'm sure there's news channels covering it. Dead Ball TV, we're going we're gonna to swipe left on that story. But with Paraguay, they only had one friendly scheduled. It's now been canceled. As of recording, they have nothing scheduled before the Copa America starts, which means they have no additional reps until their opening match against Colombia at the Copa. It was already a big mountain to climb. They have Colombia and Brazil in the group, and I believe Costa Rica is the fourth team. Anything we need to say about Paraguay here is kind of hard to have a takeaway, but you got to think losing that, that rep was a big deal. Against against an informed Russia, I might add. That would have been a great game for them. They just beat Serbia 4 nothing. If Colombia is an A+, plus, then Paraguay is an F. You got to have something. You got to show me yeah. something. This is looking like a quick group stage. It's looking like they're going to give away um, nine points for free. I think a win for them at the Copa America would be giving away what? Five to six. Mm. That would be a massive dub. A single win for Paraguay would be a massive dub at the Copa America. But right now, I think you're out. Oh, dude, let's not get it confused. I think that Paraguay-Costa Rica game is going to be very competitive. Like, if you think Los Ticos are just going to roll over, Alfaro's got them looking good, dude. I mean, as good as he yeah. can. They... Their defense is woeful, but I mean, he scored a goal against against y'all. That's a big deal. That is That's a big, a deal. big deal. So I'm just saying, any any Paraguayos out there, like I'm not saying Costa Rica is going to win. I'm just saying, to your yeah, point, yeah. getting a dub that's it's going to be tough. It's, it's going to be really tough. going to be tough. So yeah, you you could argue that the biggest loser. I I still think it, man. Ecuador well, flirting with that though. Yeah. Flirting with that. Biggest loser. At least they had Who's games. The At least they had reps, though. That's true. That's true. I just think the performance was a little disappointing. Um, Agreed. A team oh, that 100%. whose performance was not disappointing was Bolivia, mm -hmm. who actually went to Algeria and lost 3-2. So they did lose, but they lost on a 95th minute penalty. And I feel like... That's pretty damn good. And then they went on and they beat, I think it was Andorra was the team that they beat. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I watched either of these games. If you think if Ivory Coast Uruguay wasn't on TV, if you think Bolivia Algeria was, I think you've given the Argentine pubs too much credit. They don't broadcast those games. It was Andorra. But I think this is pretty damn solid for Bolivia. Does it give them any hope for the Copa? No. It doesn't. I hate to say it. But the fact that their FA is able to... Huh, the fact that their FA is able to organize two games? Better than Paraguay? Better yeah. than Paraguay? 
I think it gives them the edge. Yes, against a, a top African team and a European team, albeit a terrible European team. But if Bolivia are doing that, and you have other federations in CONMEBOL, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, let's just take it straight to Peru. I mean, what the hell is going on here? And I have to say, fun fact, another fun fact, Paulo Guerrero scored for Peru during this break. That was his first goal for Peru since the 2019 Copa America final. So it had been a while. To be fair, he did retire and then come back. But with Peru, biggest thing for me, I think, is it looks like they are going to go with a 3-5-2 at the Copa America. I'm not completely sure how that's going to pan out. I think given how Chile look and even, even Canada just having star power, you have to think Peru are third best in the group. Yeah. And maybe I'm hating. Maybe I'm hating because I, I just I don't want to get my hopes up for this team. But you got outshot at home by the Dominican Republic. I know you won the game 4-1. I know you won, won the game 4-1. You were clinical. But you got outshot uh, at, at home. Regardless of context, audience, can we agree? Chat, let me know. Can we agree? Regardless of context, you never want to hear that your national team was outshot by Dominican Republic at home. Can you imagine if Argentina was outshot at the Bomanera? By the Dominican Republic. Riots. 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 Yeah. Th that to me, I just saw that. I said, All right, I'm out. I'm out, mate. I'm already done. Selling. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Selling. I can't get invested in this team. I can't do no. it. I'm following Gareca. Yeah. Shout out to Peru. Shout out to Peruvians. Give us some bright lights, some spotlights. If you want to, if you want to argue this. That's fine. Six goals in uh, in your two two games, fantastic. But let's look at the competition here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna argue the same thing for Argentina, but we know Argentina is a good team. I think we still know yeah. that Peru is a bad team. This doesn't change anything. Just like it doesn't change anything for Argentina, it doesn't make them better or worse. Smooth sailing. I like that you know how to score goals now. You remembered. But six goals against Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, that translates to one goal in the Copa America? Maybe two? I, uh, oh, two I is don't, way too much. I don't think they scored two in the same game. Mm -mm. No, may, maybe Canada, just because they can be a bit open. But maybe. I think Canada's going to have more possession than them, though. I mean, dude, these are these are dog water CONCACAF teams. Dog water. Dog yeah. water. Dominican Republic, like, they're playing baseball the entire time. Dude, Haiti are better than – they might as well have scheduled Haiti and Curacao, and it would have been a better window. I'm not even kidding. I think I said El Salvador or earlier on in the video, but, yes, thanks for correcting where's, me. Where's it my boy Guadalupe? Guadalupe? Where's Guadalupe? Get Somebody hit here, up bro. Guadalupe. Yeah. They're going to run against you if you at least want to get some cardio in. Get them in there. But the Dominican yeah, Republic, you, all they do is base running. What's going on? Yeah. Shout out to all my Dominicans. Junior, they saw that Junior Firpo committed, and they were like, I guess the Dominican Republic is back. Let's get these guys in here to Lima for a couple of games. It's just, it's absolutely dire. Uh, to end it on a positive note with Peru, though, this was their first back-to-back -back victory since September 2022 when they beat El Salvador 4-1 and Paraguay 1-0. So it is good to get some wow. wins on the board. Yes, you need that. Yes. You, you can't say this was a bad window for Peru. I still think no. getting out shot. I mean, good Lord, man. Like, the Dominican Republic, they can't even make the Gold Cup and you're getting out shot at home. I know I feel like it probably seems like I'm bullying, I'm picking on one stat and extrapolating, but it is inexcusable. Cannot happen. If Canada got outshot at home against the Dominican Republic, massive failure. Much less Peru. Like, it's just, mm, mm, mm. It's Depressing. peak. It's, it's peak. absolutely peak. Let's talk about the Venezuelans very quickly. Probably would have been a natural transition to go from Ecuador to Venezuela, but here at Epal TV, we never do things like that. So they They're lost to guessing. Italy. Got to keep you guessing, yeah. I mean, next we're gonna we're actually gonna go to Japan. That's the next team we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We're going to assess the North Korea game. So Italy defeated Venezuela 2-1, and then they drew Guatemala nil-nil. Now, you and I in the prediction, we said we want to see some offensive football. We, don't, we want to see some fireworks in that Guatemala game. We weren't expecting them to beat Italy. I think a 2-1 loss is actually quite good for Venezuela. Yeah. How are you feeling about that nil-nil, though? I'm not feeling good about that nil-nil. I'm not feeling good about the nil-nil. Um, to me, just gut reaction there. I think they went to Italy, right? Or they, they went and they played Italy. I don't know where the game was. Do you know? Uh, probably Jersey or something as well. I don't know. Jersey. Okay. So they went. They played Italy away from home. Fantastic. I think that they have the exact same train of thought. Two to one against Italy. Not bad. Okay. Ecuador can't do that. Or Ecuador. Ecuador. We're on the same page here. Okay. Yep. We're competitive in Copa America. Now, let's go. Let's get our confidence back. Let's get back into the rhythm against Guatemala. They took the foot off the gas. Guatemala took that opportunity to step up to the plate. Lo and behold, you got a zero to zero. We needed fireworks. Your best attribute is your knife's edge. You have the capability for some fireworks on offense. You got to be training that. You got to be doing something fancy. Do something fancy here because in the Copa, they're not going to let you. To me, this right here, oh, dude, the foot off the foot's off the gas now. It's going to be really hard to build momentum back for the Copa America. I don't know how good you're going to look now. This is weird. This is weird. This is like a little hezzy step. I don't know how momentum's going to get built again. Um, I don't think we're hitting the panic button or anything like that. Obviously, that they can put up a fight like they did against Italy. And maybe this is a good vibe check for them, right? They've got the monkey off their yeah. shoulder. Okay, but it's time, right? Now they're going to se tiene que poner bola to go play hard now. And maybe this yeah. will be their wake-up call. But um, I wasn't a huge fan of that. Wasn't a huge fan of that. I'm going to present a little side topic here. I feel like too many people in the footballing space, and I blame U.S. Men's National Team Twitter. I don't know why, but I just feel like they're responsible. That the hype around this Venezuelan team, it's getting too much. I'm seeing too yeah. much too much praise. I'm seeing more praise for Venezuela than Colombia. Somebody explain that to me. Which is wild. Somebody explain that. Why is this the one that you're picking? Why is this the team that everybody's freaking out about? Why? I don't know. I don't know. You know, like sometimes in the NBA, they had the most improved player of the year award, right? Most of the time, it goes to a guy who went from, like, four points to 15 a game. Like, a pretty significant increase. And that is Venezuela in this case. Okay? I don't know who the most recent example of that was. Like, maybe, like, who's that white dude who can shoot for Miami? They used to have, like, five of them. But now I think they, they got rid of most of the whites. They only got two now. It's not Tyler Hero. Duncan Robinson. I feel like yeah. it was, like, a Duncan Robinson type thing. I know the thing. name. Could never have told you that, but I recognize. But sometimes I've always felt like, well, should the most improved really go to the player who was ass cheeks and is now solid? Or should it go from the guy who was solid and is now an all-star? Because that is Colombia. They went from solid to second team all-NBA. First team all-NBA. Maybe even third, if you want to call it like that. To me, that's the most improved player. Because your ceiling was high, or excuse me, your floor was higher, so you didn't have as much space to improve, and you still jumped up. Yeah. Whereas Venezuela, we're averaging four points a game. And now they look like they're going to get a two-year contract extension. That's how I feel like these two teams are. But everybody's focused on Venezuela because of how historically ass they are. And yeah. I'm glad that Venezuela are respectable now. So are you. But I think too much hype is building. And I feel like... There's actually a weird pressure now that Venezuela need to advance from the group. And this is something that a year ago, nobody Unheard would have expected. Of. No, unspeakable. Yeah. You, we would have been laughed at if you made this claim yes. a year ago, right? But now, yes. yeah, like you said, it's almost it's almost expected. It's almost expected. Mm -hmm. to, it doesn't make any sense, right? Yes. The, Correct. To go from four points a game to seven points a game, it just varies on the night, right? To, but to put up all-star points consistently, right? To be able to come into this window, go to Europe, and do some impressive competition, I have no idea why nobody's talking about that. 
no clue. It doesn't make any sense. And Colombia, Colombia has been decent. We've been talking about them for a while, right? Yeah. So what yeah. are we, what are we doing? What's what are the vibes here? This is what y'all picked, and people are still sleeping on Ecuador, right? Yeah. Nobody's talking about the fact that this is an underappreciated window. They're just using it to build up a case like, ah, oh, we can write them off, you know, Estupinian exception. Well, at least with Ecuador, they have the talent to justify the hype. You know, people yes. are concerned okay. about the All team right. going forward, but they still have that star power that even if they play like like ass, which they probably will in at least one game, they – we see it all the time, you know, a, a, a freak moment from Eden Hazard, Phil Foden, Jack Grealish with Villa just bails out the team. As a for Palace, we see this all the time. Who's doing that for Venezuela? Soto? Jefferson? Like, maybe. But they don't even have the talent to justify Not in the, the Copa America. Not in the, Not Copa, in the America. Copa America, dude. Like, I, I don't know. I was looking at the home in a way record for Venezuela. And at home, they're very good. But the Copa America is not being played at home. It's being played in the United States. They haven't scored two goals in an away match in nine games when they beat Saudi Arabia 2-1. And they rarely, rarely win. It's usually draws and L's. And and to, to focus on the Guatemala game as well, this was Guatemala's first clean sheet in nine games since they played the Canada B team in the group stage at the Gold Cup. So I'm just seeing a little things here. I'm like, I don't, I don't like that you couldn't score. That concerns yes. me. That concerns me as well. Again, I don't think it's time to hit the panic button, but it's going to be interesting to see how they respond to this stoppage of momentum. Yes. I don't have Taking anything it else to, to say. I, I got nothing else to say about them either. It's... They're, they're a very solid defensive team that needs to counterattack. And when they can't counterattack, I think they're going to be in trouble. Now, Brazil is a very interesting subject. We're leaving the two, two big boys for last year, Brazil and Argentina. They went to Wembley. I've, I've, I've got, hold on, I've got more to say about Argentina. Do we want to end with Brazil or we want to end with Argentina? Let's end with Argentina. Okay. Because I think right. we ended right. with Brazil. I think we ended with Brazil last. No, we ended with Peru last time. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, how do you rate? What is your takeaway from Brazil in this window? 1 0 win against England at Wembley, 3 3 draw against Spain. I don't think we need to make any sweeping assumptions here. I, I, Obviously, more impassioned about a lot of the other results. Here, I'm going to keep it very conservative. Brazil is Brazil. They're still Brazil. We can see that they can put on performances like Brazil. To go to Wembley and do something is big. Mm -hmm. To compete against a Gareth Southgate side, the USA pulled a draw against them in the World Cup, so let's not get it twisted. England is not a ground-shaking team. The expectation is there. They're fantastic, but they, they were without Harry Kane. So, yeah. first off, you got a top five player in the world. Well, he's not there, so we have to consider that. Now, Brazil's without Neymar, but the argument can be made. Brazil plays better without Neymar, right? So, all of these things taken into consideration... A 1-0 win in Wembley is great. I would be a lot more hyped for it if England was the powerhouse that they are made out to be. If that happened, Brazil's back for me. But right now, I think that England team is very beatable. What, your most electric player is Jude Bellingham? Very good player. Very good player. He's not Harry Kane. Him or Foden. Him or Foden. Yeah. Him or Foden? Yeah. If you're talking electric, yeah. I mean, He's Gordon's not Harry Kane. Fast. Yeah. Okay. But you see what I'm saying here? Like, there's a lot of intangibles that we have to take into account with this stuff. I'm very happy for Brazil. I was a Brazilian fan when they beat England. For sure. In Wembley, let's do it. Stick it to them. I'm here for it. But a beatable England side. Now, Spain 3-3. Three to three. That I'm a lot more interested in. This is a dogfight. This is a mm -hmm. dogfight. 
Both teams ready, raring to go. That's the competition that we need to see. Yep. That's what we need to do. I want to add, I want to be very clear about this as well. Both penalties that Spain were awarded, total bullshit. Neither of those are penalties. Horrible refereeing. Dude, go back and watch them. Listen to the English commentary. Listen to Spanish commentary. They're both like, no, like that. surely this is not getting called. And then they did it again later on in the game. So I actually think Brazil outplayed Spain. They, they fully deserved to win that game. The, the Danny Olmo goal is beautiful. The Spain second goal, beautiful. Uh, Lamina Mall, his, his dribble that draws the completely phantom pen is amazing. But on the whole, I thought Brazil were better against Spain than they were against England for sure. And 3-3 three, three, flatters Spain. The ladders them. I think that the goddamn ref just couldn't have Spain taking two L's against common both teams. I think that's what was going down here. Yeah. He said, uh oh, I lost in the Benner Bale. No. Yeah. Neither of those are called in any other venue. Absolutely not. It was and horrible I, I refereeing. Think, I think Brazil will know that. I think Brazil will know that. Um notes to take away from Spain, Brazil. I don't think Brazil has any. I think they said we came here. We got a win in Wembley. We should have had a win here. Rodri, best six in the world, happens to drain two penalties. It is what it is. I think they go to Copa America confident here. And I think we need to watch out because Brazil is still Mm -hmm. Brazil. Does this change my thought process around them? Do I think that they're back? Do I think that they're the clear favorites? No, no. But I think this is a nice reminder that even a bad Brazil is capable of going to Europe and playing with the big boys. Don't sleep on okay. Copa America. Don't sleep on South America. Because this, no, is, this is what it is. Chile is scaring the hell out of France. And Spain's got to get two penalties awarded to them. Complete Shoot, Italy might win penalty. it again. <laughs> Italy might win it again. <laughs> Dude, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe Ukraine goes all the way. I, I have no idea what's about Come to go on, down there. Man. But I'm going to give more credit than you are. To this Brazil performance, right, I know that I'm, it's just I'm a hater. A f- I'm a hater, so that's yeah, good. I know, I know, I know, and that's why I need to counter this a little bit. I know that it was just a friendly, but don't give me that with the situation. And I'm gonna tell you why. Brazil walk in with a completely foo foo back line. I mean, I didn't know who three of these brothers were. Yeah, Bruno, Baraldo, and Wendell. Never heard of them in my life. Krepsky is a goalkeeper. Who the hell is that? With all due respect, the only guy I knew was Danilo. That was the only person in the back five for Brazil that I knew. Jao Gomez, big player for Wolves. He getting the start and at center mid? I mean, I know that England didn't have Harry Kane, but Brazil didn't have a defender. They literally, no, no Thiago Silva, no Marquinhos. They didn't have anybody. Any of the, no Militao, no Ederson, no Allison. They're playing their third or fourth keeper, and they and you- neutralized. England. You neutralized and this is this is still good. You're missing Harry Kane, but you've got Phil Foden, Jude Bellingham, Anthony Gordon, who's been playing really well this season, and yeah, Ollie Watkins. Good season. Arguably the most productive player in the Prem this season. Correct. Correct. Will be fighting for a spot in team of the season and probably should get it. Yeah. And England had a couple a couple half chances. But they were really frustrated. And I think that's big, man. And again, following it up with how they played against Spain, I think that's big. And you know what? Endrick needs to be mentioned in this video. Yeah. Two goals in his debut. Well, not in his debut game, but in his debut window with Brazil. He's got two goals. How many goals do you think Vinicius Jr. has for Brazil in 28 games. Six. How many goals do you think Rodrigo has in 22 games? For Four. Brazil? Okay. Rodrigo has five. He's got five and 22. Vinicius has three goals in Come. 28 oh. matches. God! One, I'm a god. And two... Vinicius next up. Hold on. Everybody pause. Hold on. 
Everybody, no. Pulls. Look, both both phenomenal yeah. players. Let's not let's nobody nobody freak out here. Not taking no, away no, no, from, no. but in a debut window in enemy territory in two of the biggest stadiums in Europe. What you're missing? What maybe? Uh, oh my God! Maybe Liverpool's home stadium. What is that? Um, Anfield. Oh my Anfield. Thank you, God. You're missing Anfield. Those are probably two of the most intimidating stadiums in Europe. Full stop. Period. Yes. And how old? Yeah, these is he? are not. Oh, dude, I don't... is he 18, 17? 18? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he he's. Is he 18? I'll Confirmed? Right yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. He is 17. Good Lord. <laughs> and, and these are not debut goals against the Dominican Republic and Nicaragua. No. No. You scored against England and Spain your first two goals. Has any player had the first two goals against a higher level of opposition? I don't think so. That's insane. It did, you cannot score against better national teams right now. I mean, the only thing better would have been England-Argentina. That probably would have been like the only... Or France, Argentina. But, I mean, this is still pretty damn good. And I'm just saying, I, I'm highlighting the stats from Vinicius and Rodrigo. Not to say that they're washed, even though y'all did try to tell me Vinicius was clear of Sun, which is just embarrassing. Imagine Sun having three goals in 28 games for South Korea. He would never. Couldn't be him. I'm pretty, sure, him. I'm pretty sure Kim young Won is a center back, and I think he has a better clip than that uh, for Korea. So all those Vinny stands, I need you to sit down. Just take a seat in the back. Chill for a little bit. What I'm saying is like, what do they say in Spanish? Like, la camisa pesa, like the shirt weighs. Oh, yeah. It's like heavy. The Brazilian shirt can be very... It literally broke Richarlison, which we don't need to get into in this video. I feel like that's probably a better for Eclipse episode, but it's literally broken people. And we see guys coming in for Brazil, and outside of Neymar, who, who usually balls out, in the attack, everybody else like forgets how to play football. Like, Rafinha is terrible. Yeah. He should he should not be starting for Brazil. No. And no, Andra comes in, 17, not a single frick given, bags a goal in both games. That is what stands out to me. And if I'm the manager and I want to prove that I got some big huevos, I might start that guy at the Copa. Because I think the first game is Costa Rica. Why not? Why not? Why not? What have you got to lose there? Rip Yeah. It. I, I would. Yeah. I would. I'd put, I'd put Hendrick in. One, that's fun. Two, it sells tickets. And three, <laughs> he's evidently less of a liability than Rafinha at the very least, if not a significant upgrade. Right? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Yes. Stand on business. It's time. He cannot be worse. Thank you. Stand on business. Earn your salary. I hate when managers don't earn their salary. Go in there, bro, and, and do something. Nobody, nobody hired you to be manager of Brazil to be safe. Just remember that. Nobody hired you to be safe. They wanted safe. They probably would have hired Tata Martina. They wanted safe. They don't want safe. They want electricity. They want samba. Yeah. They want give, samba. Give the people what they want. Give the people what they want. Make us now, fall in love with football again. Yes. And the way that they were playing in these two games, I think they're on the right track. Argentina. 3-0 win against El Salvador. 3-1 win against Costa Rica. I watched the whole Costa Rica game. I didn't get to catch much of the first one, but I did see the highlights. You guys outshot these teams. 47-9. to 27-4 to shots on target. In favor of Argentina. I don't think I've ever seen a number that big in two games. <laughs> 27 shots on target in two games. Like, what are we even doing, bro? And I feel like that's the biggest takeaway is like, you playing some minnows, dog. Go off, though. I know these, these, these are your people. Go off. What you got to say about this? These are my people, and I'm very concerned. <laughs> I'm very concerned <laughs> that we're over here playing patty cake with Central America while the Brazilians are off doing God's work, and Colombia seems to be, what, a, yeah, hyperbolic time chamber preparing for cell. Like, it, I'm, I'm a little concerned. And the Argentines, yes. they look unbothered. They look unbothered. Now, we're playing good football. It looks great. But mm -hmm. let's not forget that we won the Copa America by the skin of our teeth. 
We won the World Cup by the skin of our teeth. We should be building on this stuff, right? We should be building. Don't hold out for that massive payday from Spain because Chiqui Tapia's fat ass wants a new sailboat to cruise down the Platense. Mm. You cannot lose a game against Africa and a game against Spain. I don't remember if it was Spain or Italy because you're asking Spain. for too much money. It was Spain. Could have yeah. been you. Could have been you. We needed that. We needed that. You did. But now we got a temperature check against some um, fifth graders. That's like you playing soccer over there in Argentina right now, training. And then I'm like, oh, I got a game against Jack next week. I'm good playing against the middle schoolers. I should be fine. Yeah, I had some ball handles. Yeah, I pushed a couple of them over. I, I scored a couple goals. I'm ready. No. I haven't hit cardio all week. This is concerning. And I bet you Scaloni was like, mm. Scaloni didn't like that. The fellas had a good time, but we're without Messi, which is nice. It's good to see that yeah. we can play without Messi. But again, we're, we're taking a step down here. And the Copa America is not going to be friendly. So I'll tell you what. It's good to see the boys. I'm happy to see the fellas get a couple dubs. I expected nothing less. It's good to see Garnacho get some reps. Not going to lie. It was a very new look for the Argentina Selección, um, at least in the squad selection. Overall, very cool. I like that. But baby steps before the Copa America. This is your last tournament with Messi and Di Maria. And probably Otamendi. And Armani. We need a reality check. We're going to need another Saudi Arabia in the group stage to kick our ass to remind us who we are and what we are capable of because that right there was not an accurate pulse check. Yeah. I'm just saying. No, it's good. you're spot on. You're spot on. And the fact that your final tune-up friendly is also against Guatemala while you have Colombia and Brazil and Uruguay playing the U.S. and Mexico. And let's not pretend like Mexico are great, but they're going to – we hate you guys. We're going to give you a game in a friendly. I guarantee it's not going to be very friendly. I'm not no. saying we're still going to lose 3 nothing, but that's going to be better preparation than Guatemala, El Salvador, and the Costa Rican U23 team. And that, off, that, that report, which who, came out, who published that tweet, Sudamerica Analytics, or I think that's the account name Something on Twitter. Like it, it's a pretty good account. You guys should follow it. There was a report that the AFA had an agreement with Spain for a friendly, but the AFA asked for a ridiculous amount of money. An insurmountable the... amount, I think. An yes. unmatchable amount is I Correct. believe what they quoted. Yes. To, to the point where I think the Spanish FA was likely insulted and then ended up picking Colombia instead. And this is an issue that could get a lot more press after the fact, depending on how the Copa America goes. Because clearly, we kind of already knew this, but clearly, the priority of AFA is money. It is not defending the Copa America title. It is money. You are not scheduling two friendlies in mother effing China. If The goal is to focus on the Copa America. You are doing that because China paid a bag. And that's concerning. And you know what? If we know that, you know there's some... There's some rumblings in the locker room a little bit. Like I'm sure some of the Argentines are like, why are we playing El Salvador in the United States right now? Like we left Europe for this? Yes. This is what we left for? For this? Yes. Interesting. Because what 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 has been discovered during this window for Argentina? You weren't tested. What, what, what did you no. guys learn? I mean, there's no, no lessons no. to be learned here. You bring in some young guys and you debut them, but that's not it's not worth it. Not right before the Copa America. Not right before the Copa America. Honestly, the biggest guy that I was hyped for, I'm I'm happy that Buonanotte got out there. Uh -huh. But Senesi, Senesi, the guy from Burnmouth who's having a decent season, I was excited to see him. We need an Otamendi replacement. We need a bad. 
but he's injured. So what now? Now we look, you, I'll tell you what, now we look like assholes. We look like assholes is what we look like. Yeah. We look like total douches. Like how much, oh, what do you want? What you, you're excited for this window. You're excited for this. Everybody's saying we're going to run it back on Copa America. How are we doing? Oh, well, let's just, um, let's insult Spain so that they don't want to play with us for another couple of years. And our stock's going to plummet drastically. Like worst case, we crash out, what, quarterfinals and the stock plummets immediately. Messi's gone. And then what? What do we have to bargain with? I love the Paul. I love the Paul. He's not selling assist. tickets. DePaul's not selling tickets. Di Maria's out. Everybody's going to be hyped for what? The Olympics? Well, I'm buying a ticket for DePaul. You're buying well, Yeah, me too. And maybe we'll be able to after this, right? <laughs> yeah. When Messi the prices leaves, are finally, finally come down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And look, I'm not, this is not me being a proponent for Messi out or anything like that, but. We look like asses. We look like jack asses right now. Go back and look at all of the um, all of the praise that Chiqui Tapia received after the World Cup and Copa America. Because I guarantee you every single one, every time he's mentioned, thank you for bringing in Scaloni. Full yeah. stop. What else have yeah. you done? You fumbled a bag. You, you one. You fumbled a bag. We had to play these two. We had to play these two guys uh, in Central America for probably half of what you were asking for a single game against Spain. So one, we're losing money. Two, we look like douches. Three, no training, no competition before the Copa. Yeah, I'm looking at Brazil, and I'm I'm a little worried right now. I still think we're a better team. And I think we'll put up a dog fight against them. But they can always win, just like we can always win against them. We have to keep the boot on the throat against them. Keep them in the cage. Do not let them out. This is not the reps that we need. Not the reps that we no. need. Poor performance. I would say overall, all goals considered, all things considered, new guys into the squad, I'd say it's a C overall window. C. Flat, bang average, you have not changed, you have done nothing. Boom. Mediocre. You want a passing grade? That's only because you scored six. And because I got to see Di Maria in a captain's armband, and we played without Messi. Okay, decent takeaways. Mediocre. Mediocre overall. Yeah. I want to play Spain. Mm -hmm. I want to play Spain. I want to humble them before the Euros. I want to put Europe on notice. But no, you didn't do anything for Argentina. You didn't do anything for the culture. You didn't do anything for the game. We went and we we pranced around. We had an off day. We had an off day in Central America. Okay. Let's see. I can already see it. I'm going to be wearing this jersey this summer. Pissed off. But you're going to see me on stream. I'm going to look like this. <laughs> Well, okay. Uruguay's up three nothing. While Uruguay's, oh my God! While Uruguay's up three nothing, because I, dude, we show up against Uruguay, we're like, ah, the, the Ivory Coast. We've seen them. We played better games. We're coming back. They beat us last time. We'll do better this time. Our okay. little brother, yeah, our little brother. Okay, Darwin Nunez is probably going to be healthy this time. Maybe I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm being over drastic here. I'm having anxiety. Is really the moral of this. No, I think your anxiety is a bit justified. And speaking of Uruguay, I was looking at y'all's fixtures, and that was the last good offensive team you guys have played. Because even in qualifying, y'all haven't played Colombia yet. Ecuador have no offense. Venezuela aren't going to go at you. And Brazil were in the middle of, like, losing five out of ten games. They were literally in a losing streak when they played against you guys, completely dysfunctional with a terror kick caretaker manager who had like three jobs at the same time i don't even understand how that was possible and we beat them with the nota mendy header let's not forget yeah it was not a great game of football that was an ugly ass game which they usually are so we have to press they that. usually are but yes you want to see something better <laughs> yeah and uruguay does not have the depth to compete with us first of no, all they don't. let's just let's just take that right off the bat every single one of our players outside of like los celso and tagliafico and what, maybe some of the fullbacks, all-stars. 
Everybody else is making waves, headlines, starting. Their team relies on them. But we're yes. going to lose against, we're going to let Uruguay punch us in the mouth? No. Our personality, the reason that we won two trophies back, three trophies back to back, is because we, we came in as the underdogs. I'm very scared that we think we're top dogs now. I need the poll. I'm glad he took out the braids. I'm not going to lie. I want a buzz cut. I want a clean buzz cut. You leave the fancy hair to mm. Emmy. Show up ready to to stand on business. That's a big ask. That is a big ask. For the ball. I'm going to send a message to Thini right now to slide in his DMs. And be like, listen, querido, we need you. Not I, Argentina. Do it for us. <laughs> Do it for us. And he's going to be like, I, mean, I miss I you. <laughs> yes. And then he's going to send something hella toxic back. Um, <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> yeah. After leaving it on red for a full 48 hours, I might add. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, dude. We'll see. I feel like y'all have been doing victory laps. This is like your fifth victory lap since winning the World Cup. And I, I do think the preparation is a little bit of an issue. Um, I guess we'll talk more about this when we do our Calm the Boat preview for the pre-Copa America friendlies. Um, as well as, guys, like I said, tons of content about the Copa America. Like, we're going to be doing videos analyzing the groups. We're going to be videos doing videos about, like, you know, hot takes, predictions, team by team analysis we're going to try to get as many guests on as we can who support like other nations to kind of get them to provide a little more insight a little more you know sentimental analysis than what we can offer uh about some of these teams and it's going to be a lot and y'all are going to love it we're going to do live streams as often as possible it's really going to be uh pedal to the goddamn metal this summer for the copa and leading up to that very very soon um if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If you're listening on streaming platforms, give the podcast a five-star rating. We have about three and a half weeks to get to 100 reviews before my birthday. That is the goal. I think we were in the 80s last time I checked, so we're getting there. We're getting there. Some of y'all are dropping reviews. Just need a few more. Hit up your grandma, your girlfriend, your cousin, all that good stuff. Y'all are awesome. We appreciate you for watching or listening, and we'll see y'all in the next episode.